Letty here. Happy Valentine's Day. We're going to be making 27 Valentine's cards using a 6x6 paper pad and a 12x12 sticker sheet. So the collection I'm using today is Echo Park's Cupid & Co. This is one of their newer collections that just came out. Really cute. Lots of uh, really pretty bold colors. And then there is also a touch of black in this one. And then I also used a couple of sheets from the DCWV Holographics paper pad that I got at Joann's. So I've already pre-made all of my card bases off camera, including my card fronts. All we need to do is decorate. We will be decorating all 27 cards on camera. So, and I did use as much of the paper as I could, including the top section of the paper pad that has the hole. Um, I also use an embossing folder, and I'll show you here. This is the embossing folder I used. I got it at Joann's a while back, and then I did use a couple of dies, and these were some dies that were new to me. Um, they were some that I had uh, received in a, in a de-stash. So this is what those dies look like. There's this one that says Amor, and then there's this one that has the double hearts. And then there's some small tiny hearts as well real cute um, and then i have already done the cut aparts and i've gotten them ready to to basically use i've already matted them on some squares and then i also stamped out some additional tags using some of the scrap papers that i had and these were some of the last little bits of scrap paper that i used um, i may try to use some of them on the inside but otherwise i'm going to consider this paper pad smashed um, and then this is the 12 by 12 sticker sheet that i also am going to use to decorate these uh, cards and this is also from the collection so i am using uh, some barely art glue I do like this glue you've probably seen that in a couple different videos so I started with the uh, vertical uh, I'm sorry the horizontal cards um, because I wanted to make sure that I used up some of the longer stickers and I also wanted to use up that die cut the, that says amor um, and so amor or amor in Spanish is love um, and so I, I thought those fit perfectly with the theme of the Valentine card so there was my card one already done quick and easy um, and again I'm using this some of the stickers that I think would work better for the longer cards um, first and that's why I'm doing these first so later you will see that I do take out my reverse tweezers to, to help me with this process of gluing uh, or adding glue to the backs of the die cuts. That's a, a good tip to use. I, I didn't start out using it, but I ended up do transferring to it. So and there's card number two. So very similar to the first one. I just used a couple different stickers. And then the, the next card I did, I'm using, um, I tried to use the, or do the, the card front that had a bunch of holes. So this is one where I used some scrap strips and there were three little holes I needed to cover. So that was the first part of my agenda on this card was to try to cover up those holes. And so you can see here, I just kind of mixed a couple of different stickers to try to do that. Um, and so... Yeah, I think they, it turns out cute. It's just adding some different elements to it. And I will come back later and add additional stickers to this one's particular card. Um, you'll see that, again, my goal was to use up the entire 12 by 12 sticker sheet. And I do have a couple of stickers at the very end that I add to that card number three. So, and then this was one where I wanted to use that little bike and I thought it was so cute. Um, and it would, I thought it would go good with this little triangle, you know, f card front. Um, but I really liked the way that it looked on the back of, or on the black, the darker paper, the black paper, than the lighter paper. So I went ahead and switched cards. Um, and then I am using some of those cut aparts and just adding some hearts. And there's card number four, super quick and easy. So one thing that I definitely can, you know, mention or recommend is do not be afraid of using up an entire six by six paper pad. Um, you can definitely take it one step at a time, just like I did here, cut down your paper, decide what you want for your card mats. Um, and then just, you know, you can even do the decoration in a second process. There's card number five. Um, and you can bring out your tools. You like, like on this card, I'm using an embossing folder. You can mix and match and do whatever you want. Um, just don't be afraid to use them. Um, I have seen where people will use the same six by six paper pad or say, they'll say that they have it in their stash for over a year and they've been using it for over a year typically what I like to do is I I'm like a one and done kind of girl so I like to go in and use up the entire paper pad um, and then uh, that way if I do if there's new collections that come out kind of like this one I don't feel bad and I just go ahead and grab them um, there was card number six and here is card number seven so these two were, were pretty much identical 
And again, those were using some scraps and an embossing folder. Um, and here I am using another one of those cut aparts. And I think they were like two by two cut aparts. Um, and I did break one of my own rules on this paper pad. I normally have a very, very hard time of cutting up the cut aparts sheets for or using the cut apart sheet for anything other than cut aparts. I did do that with this with this pack. Here's card number eight. So this uh, paper pad did come with an additional set of cut aparts, but they were all different sizes. And some were as small as like you know, uh, three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. I knew that I wasn't going to get very much bang for the buck on those very, very tiny cut aparts. And so as a result, I ended up using the backside card number nine. Um, so I only ended up using two sheets of cut aparts on these cards because I figured the rest of my sentiments could come from the stickers, um, or the, the amor die cut. So you don't have to um, always use up those cut aparts. I, I I've mentioned this I've you know I've mentioned this before in a previous video. I have a hard time of not using my cut aparts as cut aparts, but I ended up breaking my own rule and I ended up you know using the backside on this one project because there were just too many and they were too small. Here's card number ten. I think what Echo Park and even Cartabella has started doing is when for their they design their twelve by twelve sheets, which for that, you know, that scale with that that size, it would work perfectly because on a 12 by 12 sheet, those little bitty cut aparts would be probably, you know, bigger than an inch, maybe even closer to two inches. But on when you bring it down to scale to six by six, it just it doesn't work as well. Here's card number 11. So some of those little cut aparts, you know, they just don't you, you're going to have a hard time trying to use a very, very tiny cut apart. It can be done. Don't get me wrong. It can be done. Um, I just have a, a, a hard time trying to do it. So I went against my own, you know, kind of rules and I went ahead and just used one set of the cut aparts, which were these two by twos, which I thought were a good size. And then I did mat them on some stitched squares. Here's card number 12. So I think it, it I think it works out. And I, in the end, I ended up having enough sentiments uh, for these cards where I did not have to take out my stamps. So I call that a win. And I do end up also using up the entire 12 by 12 sticker sheet um, and the entire paper pad, except for a few scraps and except for two stickers that were damaged when I received them. I don't know if you saw my unboxing video, but they did come damaged to me. Card number 13. Um, so I ended up not trying to even, you know, lose sweat over it. I just didn't use them at all. I'm going to end up just chunking them. No, no, no worries there. I really liked the way these... Um, these die cuts cut on this holographic paper. I thought they looked so cute. Uh, here's card number 14. It just really brings out like an extra level of like bling. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, using those die cuts on the on the holographic paper. And I think I'm going to try to keep that paper pad handy um, to die cut for other additional projects because it is just so fun. And I think it just adds so much uh, to my projects with just having a touch of the holographic just really, really fun. Um, so you see here, I'm just adding a couple of additional little hearts and that's card number 15. And the neat thing about that one die cut set that I had, it had different sizes of hearts, which works perfectly for, for projects like this. Um, because if you have one die cut, that's all the same size, um, it's, it's kind of hard to make it kind of look di diversified or whatever. Um, but in these, that one die set or die cut set, it had small ones, mediums and large. And then it also had the, the joint hearts which was nice card number 16 you see we're just breezing through these that's what i'm saying you can easily take this in steps the way that i did where i did my card bases then i cut up my paper and i did my card fronts then i went ahead and cut the cut apart separately and i die cut and back those in a separate set um of you know and in time or, or part of the project and then the last part was just to kind of bring it all together here's card number 17 and I mean, you literally, you can't go wrong with using this, the matching stickers that go with the paper because it's going to go. It literally is just, it's going to match either way, whatever you do, all the patterns are going to match, all the papers are going to match, or for the most part, everything generally matches. That's why they put them together in one collection. Now you will have paper pads sometimes that are kind of, you know, off the wall and the patterns don't necessarily match the way that these do card 18. Um, but sometimes, but for the most part, you will actually have it where they do match. So it's, you know, don't be afraid to mix and match those patterns. They put them together for a reason. And most times it does match. Uh, card number 19. 
they set them up that way so that way they coordinate and you can do projects like this where you use scraps and kind of put them together those are three different pattern scraps and i mean you can see there i mean it it does work it works so definitely you know definitely try it if you haven't and like i said don't be afraid of those six by six paper pads they're actually pretty pretty quick to to smash if you think through it met methodically or whatever here's card 20 And I'm trying to use up all of the stickers as best as I can. That was my goal, to use up the entire paper pad and the entire pack of stickers. I didn't want to stick anything back in my stash, especially since when I ordered from uh, the company at the beginning, when I when I brought these two pieces into my, my stash, I only picked up these two pieces of the collection. So it doesn't make any sense for me to try to put up, you know, five stickers or whatever, um, or one sheet of paper. So I went ahead and just smashed the entire thing. Here's card number 21. So I'm getting down to the very last card bases and the last bits of stickers so what I do here is I change it up just a little bit and I take out all of the cards that I wanted to use a big focal image on which were these that have the little banner um, and this is one of those banners that I had gotten from the dies from in love art shop I'll link it down below in the description box below I really like that that banner set um, it's the one that has the coordinating in and outward banner or the inside and the outside and the outside is scalloped and stitched um, anyway, so I was looking for bigger images to put on those. So that's why I gravitated to finishing up those cards first. Um, and then after that, then I just kind of went in and tried to use what I could. Um, and literally I'm just adding stickers and die cuts at the very end, just to try to use up every single bit of what I had already die cut and what I had ready from that sticker sheet. Um, because again, I did not want to put anything back into my stash. Um, and you will see at the very end, I have a couple of little scraps left over. I'm probably going to just add them to the insides of the cards. If they're usable, if they're too small and not usable, I'm just going to put them in the recycle and call it a day. Um, and I will have no, you know, feelings lost over this or no stress over losing those little bits and pieces. Card 22, um, because the bulk of that paper pad was smashed. So here, my goal, my neck, my goal for these last four or the four that have this little banner was just to cover up that hole. So you see here, I kind of start by covering up some of those holes and then I work around that because I definitely didn't want to get in a position where I ran out of die cuts or I ran out of stickers and the hole was still showing on the card. Um, so here's card 23. Um, and so that's where I kind of tried to cover up that hole first before I moved and did anything else on any other part of that card. And I'm just layering and generally things in sets of three look great or look best. So here's card number 24. And really and truly it's it's combinations or groups of odd numbers. So I, I tend to gravitate towards three um, a lot because to me that's what looks kind of best. Um, and then here I am finally bringing in some of those little die cut tags that I did. Card 25. I had almost forgotten about them because they were sitting with my scraps and then there towards the end i do bring some of them in i think i have one tag left over which again not a complete loss i can just throw i can actually put that in my stash since it's already die cut um but you can see here i'm just kind of using up the last little bits of stickers uh, anywhere that i can to try to finish up these cards and i do end up using uh, all of those die cuts as well that i ended up die cutting card 26 and then this was my last card right here which is card 27 um, and i'm just again finishing it up so here's card 27 that was the last of them i do have a couple of stickers left and they were a ticket um, and a word that says smooch so i thought they went perfect with this kissing booth card so and you see here i used up the entire paper pad except for this one sticker that was damaged upon delivery and then this one that was torn also upon delivery i was not going to stress over using them so i finished up the whole sheet in my book i'm going to go ahead and just you know set this aside that's i'm going to consider that smashed um, and then here are here's just a recap of all of the 27 cards that i completed um, and again, this was the Echo Park Cupid & Co. collection. It is brand new. I believe it came out 2020, at the end of 2020. I used up the full 6x6 paper pad and the full 12x12 sticker sheet on this one. So these were all the cards that I got. So just real quick and easy, definitely very, very straightforward. I didn't even use a ton of supplies on these. I didn't have to take out my stamps. 
Um, these were very straightforward. Uh, leave, feel free to leave me a comment down below which was your favorite card. I did number all of the cards as I was making them, so it should be relatively easy to do so. Let me know which was your favorite. Let me know which types of cards you like. Uh, let me know if you prefer these types of cards over the cards that have stamp sentiments. And above all, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. So we're finishing up. Here's the last couple of cards. Here's the ones with those die cuts. And again, that was our Echo Park Cupid & Co. paper pad. We made 27 cards from that one six by six. Thanks for visiting, everybody. Hope you subscribe, like this video, and follow me on Instagram. Thanks. Happy Valentine's.